Hey, welcome to another episode of Portsmouth Chat with host Lisa Carver. Lisa Carver is the Executive Director of the Portsmouth Area Chamber of Commerce. And today she's going to be talking about how the uh, Portsmouth Chamber of Commerce has been adapting to the COVID-19. So stay tuned. Hey, welcome back to another episode of Portsmouth Chat with host Lisa Carver. Lisa Carver is the director of the Portsmouth Area Chamber of Commerce. And the chambers of, of commerce throughout the state have had to, interestingly, change some of their operations and continue to serve the business community in which they serve. Uh, Lisa, it's always a pleasure talking with you. Thank you. It's great to be here, Patrick. And I, I know that uh, you've had an extensive background uh, working with the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, you, you have had uh, a lot of different unique things that have helped to spur Portsmouth, Ohio. And you've also been in contact with other Chambers of Commerce. And, you know, we're, we're under an interesting situation with the COVID-19. We are, and uh, like everyone else, our organization has had to adapt, um, like we're doing today, doing most of our things virtually. And, um, you know, the Chamber, the Portsmouth Area Chamber of Commerce is celebrating 100 years this year. Wow. And, you know, we were all geared up for a big year of celebrations all year long, and uh, we've implemented a new strategic plan, and... Um, it's uh, it's been challenging, you know, to uh, to carry out some of our, um, our our missions and our goals, you know. <laughs> um, but we but we've been able to do that um, uh, on a different scale. Um, but uh, like I say, we um, you know we're turning a hundred, and we've decided we'll probably just celebrate into next year as well. So. <laughs> I, I I understand. I for for our uh, viewers that are viewing this uh, telecast a little bit later. We're, we're in the middle of August uh, 2020, and uh, we're, we're, we're seeing the decline of the problems with COVID, at least in Ohio, but we want to make sure that we stay safe. We continue following the uh, uh, mandates of the, the governor, of the city officials, uh, with our own supervisors and bosses, and uh, it's it's been very interesting. You have a very active uh, port, uh, uh, chamber of commerce in which you have a variety of different programs that are going on. How have they been um, faring, if you want to call it that, during the COVID nineteen? Well, um, I like to think they've been faring very well. Um, we do have some things, obviously, that we put on hold, um, and I'll talk a little bit about those. Um, Obviously, we are trying to do everything we can virtually, and we're still meeting with members one-on-one, -on -one. Um, but you know, so much of what the Chamber of Commerce does is networking, and it, we're living in a time where you can't have mass gatherings, so that's been challenging, uh, but we have continued to meet with our members one-on-one, -on -one, uh, go to their place of business. Obviously, we wear our masks, and um, you know, we do it safely. Um, but, but like I say, so much of what the chamber does is networking, and that's been the challenging part. Um, so some of our events um, have been put on hold. Our business after hours, you know, is one of our most popular networking events. We meet every month at a different member location, 
we'll have anywhere from um, 50 to 100 people. And um, obviously right now we just can't do that uh, safely. So those have been put on hold. We do have one scheduled for September, but we're hoping to be able to have. We're not announcing anything yet. It will be outdoors. Um, but uh, like I say, we'll just have to see, you know, where the mandates go. Because currently in Sciatta County, we have a mandate of no more than 10 uh, at a gathering. Um, so, so obviously that, that's on hold. We hope by September, maybe by the end of September, that that might change. We go ahead with our plans. Um, but, uh, but like for right now, our business after hours are, are somewhat on, in a holding pattern. I'd like to just revisit something. Mm -hmm. the, the purpose of the chamber uh, is basically what? Okay, the chamber, you know, we're a business organization, membership organization, and we support small business. We, our goal is to um, make doing business in the Portsmouth area easier. Uh, more beneficial to our members, give our members exposure. And um, obviously at a time where, uh, like this, giving them exposure is, is a little bit more challenging. And, um, but, but we've continued to do that. Um, we are a resource for small businesses. Um, that's another one of our, our benefits. We are a, a resource for small businesses. And we've continued through COVID to try to give our members as many tools, as many resources as possible to navigate the changes that are happening within their businesses. You know, so many of our members have had to um, um, incorporate online um, shopping, online ordering, things like that. Um, and, and obviously we've, we've tried to be there to give as many resources as we can. Um, and always like, you know, always in the chamber world, if we don't have the answer, we, can, we try to find it. Um, because we, we don't have all of the answers. And most of us, like you say, we're learning as we go with this with the, you know, having to use the te different technologies for our meetings and things, um, we learn as we go. And, uh, but like you say, we have continued to be there for our members as a resource. And I, I know that you have a number of different organizations and a number of different training events mm -hmm. uh, that help those small businesses. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. it, it seems that you have one uh, training event that is very, very popular with many small business people. Mm -hmm. And that's the Hour of Power, is that correct? Yeah. Uh -huh. Yes, our Hour of Power uh, with David Beam. David Beam is a business coach. He has been, um, I believe, for about 20 years. Um, and his company is Beam Business Services. We've worked with Dave Beam for probably four or five years now to bring these uh, monthly sessions. Uh, they've been, they were wildly popular um, in person. And um, like I say, we've been having um, probably, oh, 30 to 40 in our Zoom meetings. Um, what we've done, we've, uh, we're collaborating with the Ashland Alliance and OSU Southern to, to bring these together. Um, because before, we were all doing them individually. Now that we're doing them virtually, we've, we've teamed up to bring it to one meeting. Um, the next one coming up, as you can see on the screen there, is Wednesday. September 2nd, um, and it is how to be a kind and effective manager. Um, this is obviously for managers and supervisors, very good training. Um, he, you know, Dave will be there to, um, you know, to, to, uh, to present this um, virtually. Registration is required. We do use the Zoom platform. Registration is required. You'll see the, the link there on the screen. You go to mentordavebeam.com forward slash events and you can register for this event. Uh, if you don't catch that, uh, anybody can just give me a call here at the office at 353-7647 and I can send the link to you. But we do require registration as, I'm, as you know, most people are finding out with, um, you know, with the different technologies. Uh, you have to have several layers of security. So uh, for security reasons, we do require uh, registration on that. And, you know, there's always a misconception about what a manager is. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, basically, we think of managers as, as a, a supervisor um, uh, over two, three, four, five people. And it, it, one of the things that I like about David Beam 
is that he just doesn't focus in on what we think a manager should be, mm -hmm. but also potential managers uh, yeah. or in individuals that are, are looking at ways to help a business grow or help a business keep their expenses down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, David, when he, when he presents his topics, um, you know, you, you always walk away with more than you, you think you're going to get. Um, he always has, he packs so much into that one hour session. And, um, and like I say, they, they become quite interactive. Um, you know, it's not just like sitting and watching a webinar. They, they become quite interactive. And like I say, we have 30, sometimes 40 people, uh, a lot of questions, a lot of different scenarios come up and they, they've been quite, uh, quite entertaining. Yep. Now, just, just out of curiosity, since it is a Zoom meeting mm -hmm. and you can record this, does he record them? So you, you can know, I'm, I'm thinking David might record those. I don't know if he's putting those on his website or not. Um, I can check on that, obviously. Um, that would be, that would, again, would be another good resource. Yeah, yeah, I, I would think so. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, with the, the Zooming that's going mm -hmm. on, there's a variety of different educational programs or webinars Mm -hmm. uh, and since many of us are at our house, mm -hmm. um, we can take an opportunity, sort of jog our memory about effective management. Uh, so it, it's, a, it's a really good resource. They, yeah. David does a really good job exactly. of getting information across. Mm -hmm. You know, on, uh, on another note about Dave Bean, he has helped us a lot with our Leadership Portsmouth program. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, um, you know, um, you know, we've had him do uh, different sessions, um, uh, how to, you know, leadership training, how to deal with difficult people, how to, you know, interpersonal relationships and things. And he's always a great resource for that. Um, and I do want to note that our leadership Portsmouth program is on hold this year. Um, we will not do a class this year. And it, that was, that was a heartbreaker for us because, this program has gone on since 1992, and you know we've graduated over 400 into the in the program. Uh, this was one we really struggled with. We really hated to have to postpone this one, but we will not start a class until September of next year. The Portsmouth leadership. Who, who usually attends that, and what's the what's mm -hmm. the uh, purpose of that? Leadership Portsmouth is uh, obviously the leadership training. Um, it can be for um, managers. It can be for upcoming managers. Um, a lot of um, it, it's utilized by basically every aspect of our membership, our large employers, our small employers, um, you know, right down to our sole proprietors. Um, and what we uh, aim to do with the program is to um, familiarize the participants as much as we can with the community, let them know about city government, county government, industry, arts and culture, education, the history of our area. Um, we've recently just added that history component and that's been a really good one. And um, to familiarize them as much as we can with the community, to prepare them to um, do their job better, you know, to, to, you know, again, it's another networking tool that we have. Um, they form their bonds with the people in the class and build their network. Um, you know, we, we, have, um, we have all ages go through the program. We have young people just beginning their career. We have people in the middle of their career. We have older folks um, who just still, you know, want that networking. Um, and uh, it's, you know, it's, it's a really good program. But like I say, it is designed to be hands-on. Um, you know, these aren't meetings where you sit in a classroom and listen. These are sessions where we go out into the public. We go to the courthouse. We spend the day at the courthouse uh, talking with the various offices. You meet everyone in every office at the courthouse. Um, we go to the, um, uh, to the county jail. Uh, you see the inner workings of how the justice system works here. Um, arts and culture. We go to a concert at the Vern Reif Center have dinner together there. Um, again, every aspect of the community that we can, and they're hands-on. So we really just felt that doing it virtually would not do the program justice. I can see the 
the value of a group of individuals and maybe they have a general idea of something exists and maybe they they don't yeah. but you're really exposing them to all different parts of the uh, yeah. uh portsmouth area oh yeah uh, mm -hmm. and, and and people that have had lived here their entire life um always uh, come out of the program learning something new about the community and that's our goal you know and um like, um, like, you know, our murals here in Portsmouth, Ohio, we have, um, you know, the wonderful outdoor art display of our murals, 2,000 feet long, uh, that depict our history. And, you know, most of us, we drive by them several times a day, we see them, but uh, we usually try to give a guided tour. And until you get that guided tour, you don't have the insight of that project and the history and the work behind that project. Um, it's really insightful to do that. So, so like I say, it's a very hands-on, hands-on program. It, yeah. it sounds, sounds like it. I, I'm glad that you're doing it and I'm sorry that mm -hmm. uh, COVID-19 got away. Yeah. Uh, now we will, you know, even though the program is on hold in our regular programming, our regular vir virtual programming that will continue, we're, we will be including um, leadership topics. Um, you know, we don't want to totally abandon, you know, leadership altogether. Sure. We will incorporate some general leadership topics into our programming. Oh, very good. Uh, you know, we've talked to some of our employers and, and just talking with some of them, we did a survey and, um, you know, we, we found out um, that a lot of our um, members were saying their employees struggled with self-confidence mm. and so we interesting you know, so yeah, exactly that kind of surprised us too that really wasn't something we had honed in on um, but it, it kind of floated to the top and so um, you know we'll be incorporating some some things like that into our okay. regular program even though the programs on hold we will have some leadership training in our regular program you, you know that really gets to the base of the uh, uh, Portsmouth area you know, every every town has its own reputation. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, when someone from up north uh, looks at uh, a city down south or vice versa, when we look up there, we only hear the bad things. And oftentimes, um, a community is made of really good people. And Portsmouth area mm -hmm. has a lot of great people. Absolutely, you know, and... And we just, you know, the last few years, we've just continued to see um, so many um, young young people stepping up and taking more pride into the community. Good. Uh, and uh, that's really, you know, that's really, um, you know, gives us, gives us hope. And uh, we've seen a big turnaround in our community with, with pride. And that, uh, and again, that's part of Leadership Portsmouth is to instill that pride and trusteeship into into the into you knowing that this is your community take care of it so yeah hmm. oh very good and I, I i know that you are in contact with a number of different individuals recently i i saw some of the past clips uh, where you had uh, uh someone from the better business bureau mm -hmm. uh, you've had uh, uh in, individuals that are community leaders mm -hmm you know, coming on and, and talking a little bit about what they do. You also, the part, your partner, uh, Kim Bauer, mm -hmm. uh, who's with the Sada County uh, Visitors Bureau, Convention and Visitors Bureau, mm -hmm. uh, shares a lot of different things, a lot of unique things. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I know that both she and you uh, work around the COVID-19. Mm -hmm. uh, and you have some other things that are upcoming. We do. Um, one of our programs that will continue is the Southern Ohio Safety Council. Oh, very good. And, you know, that's a program that we have worked with the Ohio Bureau of Workers' Comp. Um, personally, I've worked with it for over 20 years. So uh, the program's been in existence for years. Um, and what this does is this, uh, the Southern Ohio Safety Council, their mission is safety education. Um, getting the workers home safely at the end of the day to their family. Oh. So safety education. And um, the program will continue. Now, in the past, the Bureau of Workers' Comp has attached different incentives to it um, for participating. 
um, rebates on the premiums. Uh, the rebate, there will not be any rebates this year, but we feel very, sure. yes, we feel very strongly that the safety education is still needed. And we feel that virtually we can still offer that. So if I'm uh, uh, starting a new business, mm -hmm. um, do I have to have employees to, to join the safety council? Um, our safety council is open to, to anybody. Um, now to benefit obviously from the rebates and things that the Bureau of Workers Comp does, yes, you have to pay, have a BWC policy and have an, at least one employee. I see. So, um, so yes, for the BWC um, benefits, yes. Um, to join safety council, no. Safety council is open to anybody. Um, anybody that is interested, obviously, in the safety education. And um, our next meeting is coming up. Well, actually, this is our first one of this, of this fiscal year. Um, through the BWC, we are required to have 10 meetings a year, and we will, we will have our 10 meetings. The first one is coming up August 27th. And um, we thought we would just start it off right off the bat, uh, talking about COVID-19 in the workplace. Um, obviously, um, we're, you know, you know we, we don't want to focus our whole year on COVID, but we thought it would be a good starting point. Um, and basically, it will be everything you need to know to keep your workforce uh, safe, healthy, and well. And again, it is a virtual meeting. We'll be using the Zoom platform. And for security reasons, obviously, registration is required. You can give us a call here at the office, and I could give that link to you. Um, our featured speakers, we're working with Southern Ohio Medical Center. They're a great partner of ours. Um, obviously, when it comes to health and wellness, they're, they're a good partner. But we're going to have Dr. David Byers. He is the infectious disease doctor at um, Southern Ohio Medical Center. And uh, Cindy Bradley and Tracy Swingler, they are both um, nurse practitioners in Southern Ohio Medical Center's occupational medicine department. And obviously the occupational medicine department is, is all about keeping your workforce well. So we thought this was a very good fit. And we're excited um, that, like I say, this will be our very first meeting of the fiscal year. Um, we're really excited. We have um, about 35 registered so far. Um, so we were, you know, you're always concerned when you approach these things virtually, um, how people are going to take it. So we were really excited to, to have at least 35 registered right now. I think that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. uh, just out of curiosity, do you record these also? Mm -hmm. are, they are they available for, uh, you know, viewers if they can't attend August 27th? They will be, yes. This will be our first one. So, yes, we are going to record it. Oh, and, good. Um, Excellent. We, um, our website is ports, is really simple. It's just Portsmouth.org. And we have a tab under there for Safety Council. And we will um, be getting those up on there. So, yes. Okay. And, and we'll, we'll list your uh, uh, email mm -hmm. information, contact mm -hmm. information yeah. on the video, et cetera. Mm -hmm. uh, Lisa, we only have a few minutes. Okay. What else is happening in in uh, the Portsmouth area? Well, you know, like I say, you know, we, we have implemented, you know, we're going to implement our strategic plan this year. And, oh. and, we, are, and we are doing that. Um, one of our um, goals uh, was to increase our membership. And with the onset of COVID, we were really, you know, really concerned. Were we going to be able to grow our membership? And we're happy to say we've added 29 new members so far. Great. Oh, that's great. So, so that's exciting for us um, at a time when everything seems to kind of be in a holding pattern. Everything's kind of on hold. Everything's slowing down that we were able to add 29 members. So what that tells us. Oh, it's fantastic. Um, you know, people still see value in what we're doing. Uh, they see the value in the resources we're offering. So we were really excited. So we are growing our membership. And that oh, was very good. That's really exciting to us. And we actually have a couple um, ribbon tying, um, excuse me, ribbon cutting ceremonies coming up. Uh, we have a couple of new businesses. Uh, one is Graf Dental in Wheelersburg. We'll be cutting the ribbon there um, Friday, August 28th at 3 o'clock. Uh, we have another one Wednesday, September 16th at the Brightview Addiction Treatment Facility here in Portsmouth. So two new businesses we're excited to add. And I mentioned ribbon tines. I want to get those in real quick. Um, you know, as some of our businesses started reopening, 
um, you know, a lot of people were thinking, oh, should we do a ribbon cutting to reopen? Well, what we decided to do were do ribbon tyings and kind of tying the community back together. Oh, so very good. That's excellent. Ribbon tying ceremony. So those were kind of neat for us. We actually took the ribbon. Instead of cutting it, we tied it. And huh. uh, those are on our very website. Good. Those are pretty cool. We, we, we kind of like those. We're still doing those if anybody's interested. So. Even with COVID-19 and you listen to the news, mm -hmm. uh, it seems that our uh, small business area, mm -hmm. uh, small businesses in our area, mm -hmm. Uh, continue to grow. They are. They're uh, growing and they're they're learning to adapt. And um, you know, um, you know, one of the industries obviously hit the hardest is is our our restaurants. Yeah. Uh, you yeah. know, because their their capacity is limited. But most of them have have learned ways around that. They've offered some outside dining if they have if they have room. They've offered some outside dining. Um, and like you say, we, we know it's still rough for them. We know they're still challenged. Um, and we continue to try to work with them and promote their businesses as much as we can. And it is uh, uh, worthy to note that uh, both Wanda and I have tried to uh, order pickups as much as possible. Yes. Yes. Uh, not only is it really delicious food, but mm -hmm. it also helps the small businesses, especially the restaurants. Absolutely, and now is a time where we all need to do that. So they appreciate that. Let's talk a little bit uh, adaptability. Mm -hmm. Well, obviously, you know, um, our chamber, other chambers, every organization out there, every business um, like ours, you know, trying to keep our membership engaged. Um, you know, we work with all the area nonprofits, the Kiwanis Club, Rotary, the Friends of Portsmouth, um, the Alzheimer's Group, you know, trying to keep your people engaged during this time at a time where you can't be together. That's been the most challenging. And, um, you know, I know a lot of our organizations, a lot of people I talked to, they were real reluctant in the beginning to use to use a virtual format. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you, tell them, you have to. You have to. You have to go virtual if you're going to keep your people engaged. You have to go virtual. You have to. You have to do that. And again, you know, make as many personal contacts as you can. We can't gather in groups, but that doesn't mean we can't talk one on one. Put your mask on and go talk to people. Can't hug them yet. <laughs> <laughs> well. Uh, hey, we're, we're talking with Lisa Carver. She's the executive director of the Portsmouth Area Chamber of Commerce. Uh, Lisa, it's always a pleasure talking with you uh, and finding out some of the neat things that are happening at the chamber. And it's always a pleasure to talk to you, Patrick. I love your, love your show. Uh, thank you, and uh, talk with you soon. Thank you.